There are three ways in which you can expand your revenue with an account. So one of the key metrics for a lot of uh, SaaS companies is net revenue retention. So of course, churn rate is a major part of that. But the other part of it is how able are you to actually grow the account and get more money out of the same account year over year. And you can break it down to three and just three components. So the first component is you sell them new things. So they're buying A and then you also sell them B. Second is you sell them more of the same thing. So you sell them more A's. So additional users, additional whatever it is that they have on the core metric. And the last thing is that you raise the price. There are only these three ways. So when you break it down like that, in my experience, it becomes easier to work with in saying, okay, so we have our net revenue retention and we want to improve it. And okay, we're gonna work on churn over here, creating a better experience, maybe making it harder to churn, maybe adjusting price to not have sort of too much churn, especially in different segments, that could be great. But then we're also already into the other part of the net revenue retention, which is the revenue part. So if we take price out of it just for now and just focus on the two other parts, which is either more or new um, on the same customer account, then it becomes sort of really a question of, well, are we solving more new problems for the customer? So are we selling them B and C and then D? So there are new things that they want us to help them with. So that is one way to expand. And then the last thing is, are we solving all of that problem for them? So let's say that you sell software to improve the work of insurance salespeople and you sell it on a seat basis and maybe you start selling them 10 seats, but they have 200 reps working for them. So as soon as you can get to 200 and sell them all the seats, you still have a delta or a gap between where you are and where you could be with this account. So usually I think of it this way. The more of the same has a specific ceiling on account level where you can go from zero to 100% in that account. The rep, the 200 reps, they're never going to buy 300 seats from you because they don't need that. So if you hit those 200 seats, then you need to solve new things for them. Then you need to say, oh, I can also send you a, sell you a lead generation solution that generates leads for you and price that per lead. Or maybe I can sell you something else that does something else for you. Then your only way to grow that account is by adding new things that you solve for them, adding new value instead of more of the same old value. And then once you have these sort of two dimensions, I always almost see them as sort of a way to, to sort of you square it out. You have you, know, you ramp a value proposition, and then you add new value propositions. And then the third dimension is the price. So you say, okay, so of all this value that we create, how much are we going to capture or extract back through pricing to us, right? So if you, if you see these sort of three formats, the price, then the problems, the number of problems you sell, and then the extent to which you deliver those problems fully, the number of seats, then you have sort of these three dimensions that almost like in my mind, they form like a cube. So whenever I look at a, at a software company, I sort of imagine, like I see what cube they have today. And then I imagine what cube they could have tomorrow, if that makes sense. So you have like a three dimensional expansion track there and say, okay, are you delivering all the value you could? Are you, are you, are you solving enough problems for your customers? If no, then, then let's reshuffle your packaging and sort of get to where you can propose to solve the new things for them. And maybe your roadmap is too weak and we need to redesign that and so forth. So we solve that. And then you can say, okay, so could we sell them all 200 seats? So that's the other dimension. Okay, let's go that. And then finally, can we extract closer to the maximal price that would be reasonable for us to extract from this business case? And then in that, let's say design vision, is sort of a much bigger cube compared to what you have today. And the reason that I'm thinking of it as a cube is that these multiply on top of each other, right? So if you have one dimension in your expansion sales, which is, oh, I sell them more things. So to sell, say, well, you have the software for the sales reps to, uh, to, to do their work. And then you have the software to hire the sales reps. And then maybe just those two things, right? So if you, 
they will grow both by the number of seats, right? Because if you, if you, if you run more candidates through and you have your more seats through, the more the customer adopts, the more both of these products will grow. And if your pricing is able to extract, let's say, fully from both of these products, then it will extract both from both products, but also from all of the seats on those products. So you can see how each of these three components of expansion revenue are multiplicative. They will actually multiply each other. So you need to look at sort of your overall configuration if, you're, if your expansion revenue isn't where it should be. And you say, well, where am I worst? Like, am I already at 200 users? Am I already delivering all the different types of value I could? Then maybe I should look at price, right? Or if you're already at 200 users and your maximum on price, then maybe you should start selling them new things, right? Solving new problems for them and so forth. So it also becomes sort of a framework for asking yourself how you can innovate to create no more and new value on this. So look at your tiny little present actual cube and imagine the big, juicy, profitable future cube that you could get to if you just got all this expansion revenue and let's say under control or on the tracks to, to the bright future that it could have. Okay, so that's how I think about it. I'm, I'm hoping that uh, you have cubes in your head from now on and, and I've convinced you that this is sort of a, a good model to use. So have fun with it anyways. Thanks. Hey there. So I create these videos for free so that you can take your great SaaS product and turn it into a great SaaS business. So if you like the video and you got value from it, you should of course subscribe to the channel and also tell a friend. So write someone and say, hey, you know, you're in SaaS. This guy talks about SaaS. Maybe there's something in there for you. So that is the only way that this channel actually grows or these videos gets around. And this is sort of how I try to provide value to everyone. I have a network of clients that I have and I get most of my business from referrals only. So the reason I make the videos and write the books and so forth is actually to just provide value to everyone else because I can only be in one place at a time. So my hope with all these videos is just to do more good in the world. And if you tell a friend or you share, you can help me do that. So thank you.